Rennie, how are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Hi, I, I got you. Oh, okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Fantastic. <laughs> how you doing, Jim? I am peachy keen. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Is it starting to snow over there yet? Um, it says it's about to snow at five. Yeah, I think it must be because I've heard the plows go down the street twice. Uh, oh, no. I haven't, haven't had a chance to get up and, and go look, though. Oh, yeah. I hear it's about to hit you guys pretty hard, though, right? Well, you know, we haven't had a good uh, snowy winter in a long time, so uh, that's okay. I don't mind. As long as uh, the snowblower will pick it up and throw it out of the way, I'm good. Right, right. <laughs> same here, same here. Oh, man. So this is our first time to uh, connect uh, on, on a call, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I scheduled like a few meetings like with you before, but I had to push it back because I was getting my laptop fixed for the past two weeks. So that was very inconvenient. <laughs> yeah, but in, at this, least we're here. in this day and age, uh, yeah, I've had a couple of days where my internet has gone down and I have a, my day, my calendar is very, very full. Oh yeah. And when the internet goes down, it's like, I, I am just, you know, it's, you want to scrambling. Yeah. <laughs> You're scrambling to get a hold of these people. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, I'm scrambling to get in touch with the tech and try to get them scheduled and get them here. And I'm on the phone trying to do the stuff myself. So it's like, I'm not even calling, you know, what I, I probably should do is call everyone, at least the ones that I can on my mobile. Right. But I live in an area where my mobile signal is really poor. Oh, it relies man. on my um, on my uh, network in order to make good calls. Oh, and so I'm wow. like, you know, it's a it's a, when it goes down. Trust me, there's a lot of scrambling going on. But <laughs> that's awesome. So, so right. Anyway, um, you know, I, I would love to hear more about you and, uh, you know, a little bit about uh, about who you are and, and what your day job is and uh, how you came to be in this real estate uh uh, space and, and what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So um, I've actually come from like the healthcare uh, field. So I started out like about like eight years ago, I was starting out as a pharmacy tech. And so um, I was just doing that. And I went to, and like, as I was doing that, I, w I went to the university, um, got my degree, got my bachelor's in uh, psychology. So I was working as a pharmacy tech while I was getting, putting myself through um, through uh, college. And then um, I think while I was working after college, I worked for like a healthcare company, like a far, like an insurance company as like an analyst. And then that's kind of where I got my passion. Like that's where I found my like entrepreneurial spirit. And um, I knew like working full time for the rest of my life wasn't something that I wanted to do. So um, I kind of um, I kind of like did some soul searching, did some, did some discernment. And like, I found out that, Hey, maybe, um, I can like start my own, like, um, maybe I can start my own kind of mortgage broker or like a commercial brokerage company. So, cause like, um, I know like I needed to start a business like, uh, like for like, as my future, like those are my future goals. So I think mortgage, like commercial mortgage brokerage was like the path that I knew I wanted to be on. So um, I think, so like, I was trying to figure out like how to get there. Cause there was this other, there's this thing called um, commercial capital training group that I've came across. And the, the uh, people who train like, like the uh, commercial brokers to kind of um, get their training is in New York. And, they had it's like a $25,000 class so I was just trying to find the money to go to that class so I figured um I would like kind of get more so I would kind of like continue on my W-2 job uh but I've actually uh I quit my W-2 job like a year ago and I pursued like uh my PMP certificate so I kind of um spent like six to seven months practicing for studying for my PNP and I finally did it and I finally passed the exam in October and so 
Uh, I've been trying to look for another uh, project manager role since then. Um, and I think I'm at a point where I need to make something happen because I've had a lot of interviews um, for other like project manager roles, but I've either got ghosted or I didn't do well on the interviews. So um, I think I've, uh, and like during this time I've had like a passion for real estate. And so that passion has been like, kind of like right now, like the whole gasoline is on that passion right now. So I just want to go full force in it. If, if I'm, if nobody's going to call me, might as well go ahead and like, kind of take, take charge and go down this route in like the multifamily, like commercial, like real estate side. Well, you I know might as well work for a boss who, who really knows and understands your talent and your passion. Right. Exactly. So, and, and no better boss to work for than yourself. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I know. I wouldn't have to deal with people ghosting me or none of all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So um, where, um, tell me a little bit more about your personal life, uh, married, single, uh, born and raised in Detroit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been born and raised in Detroit. Um, ever since I was born, uh, I'm, I'm single right now. So I, I just want to get this like under, like get this going before I like get married. So kind of have that good stream of income before I kind of, uh, get into that realm. So that's what I'm kind of like looking to do right now. And, uh, how old are you? Uh, so I'm 29. I just turned okay. 29, like three weeks ago. Oh, well, happy birthday. I'm, oh, okay. I'm about to turn 63 in, in a, about the same amount of time. So oh, <laughs> happy yeah. early birthday. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Um, so is anyone else in your family um, uh, have their own business or, uh, um, or into real estate? Where did you pick up that, uh, that spirit from? Yeah, so um, my mom is like, is kind of like has that entrepreneurial spirit. So um, she's been wanting to get into um, real estate for the longest time too. So she um, is trying to start her own uh, adult foster care business. And um, she's trying to acquire some single family homes so that she can kind of start her first um, adult foster care home. And then like from then on, she can build and acquire more single family properties from then on and then kind of make it bigger as, as she goes on. So I kind of got that spirit from her because she always had that like passion for business, like, like since like forever for like 15, 20 years ago. So I kind of get it from her. I feel. Will this be, uh, uh, this foster, adult foster home idea. Will that be her first foray into her own business? Um, so like she's an independent contractor, so she's a nurse practitioner. So, um, she has like a lot of patients that, um, she knows that needs, um, like an adult foster care home. So that's what she's been trying to start. But like, yeah, it would be like her first like business that she would manage herself. So yeah, it would be. So is she kind of working in that industry already and just sees that there's a lot of opportunity or yeah. what is, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause like she, she, she meets patients every day. So as a nurse practitioner, she's like uh, self-employed. So she um, has like 15 patients a day that she sees and, um, she knows that there's like a real big need for this. And uh, she, there's like a lot of pool of patients that she knows that can kind of like um, benefit. So yeah, it's, it's something that she um, kind of knows that there's a need for. So, um, and uh, you have brothers and sisters, what uh, dad? What yeah, so my, my dad's not that big into real estate, but he, um, at first, uh, once he came into, um, into America, he bought like seven or eight, he had eight single family, uh, rental units, but, uh, right before the crash in 2008, he had to sell them all to a wholesaler, uh, because like, I, I think at least five of them were vacant and he just didn't know what to do with them. So he just like got rid of all of them and he kind of got like, like PTSD from all that. So I don't think he wants to go back into it. <laughs> so it, it sounds like to me that he would have been a better passive investor uh, than an active investor. 
Right. Yeah, he, under, he understood that there was some power there, but then got in over his head possibly uh, with all the having to manage yourself and, you know, all of that stuff. Right, right. And like, it's the thing where um, he, he just bought like rental houses in Detroit and um, the tenants that lived in his house like weren't the greatest because they trashed the property. They, they burned one on fire. The one, like one house was burned down and he had to like pay out of his pocket to repair for that. So he didn't have any reserves to like take and take all that to account. Yeah. So uh, is um, dad still working or is he retired? Uh, yeah, he's going to retire in like three months. So yeah, um, he's, he's still working as of now, but he will be retiring very soon. What does he do? So he's a jeweler. Yeah, so he's been um, doing that for like 35 years. Ever since he came to America, he's been doing that ever since. So where did he immigrate from? Uh, from from India. Okay. So yeah, they uh, my parents both came here um, in 1987. So they've been in Detroit ever since. And does he work uh, for an independent jeweler or does he work like for an exchange or uh, some type of brokerage in the wholesale side? Uh, so he, he actually works for um, like, a, like a jewelry store. So he, he just works for like this family owned jewelry store for like the, that's been here for the past like hundred years. So it's been passed on from generation to generation. So he's been working for them. So this entire time. And uh, any brothers or sisters? Yeah, so I have uh, I have a older sister that's gonna graduate from NP school. So uh, she's about to be a nurse practitioner. Okay. And uh, my younger sister is in medical school at Michigan State. So uh, she's uh, getting her um, DO. She's in DO school. So yeah, she's uh, in her first year. You've got a you've got a lot of uh, good family network to help them learn how to become passive investors. Oh, in yeah. Some of your deals and help them save and, and teach them some smart tax strategies very early in life so right. that they don't have all that money taken away from them. Oh, right. So. Yeah, definitely. Because like I like because um, right now I'm doing my master's and it's like a dual degree program. So um, that's something that we're learning like little by little. So I do. I am like the one I had that business acumen in the family. So that's something that I can definitely help them with for sure. Did, did I hear you say you're seeking your master's or one of your siblings? So yeah, I'm actually in a master's program. Like it's okay. like a dual degree program. So um, I'm trying to like get to as many meet. I'm trying to attend to as many meetups as I can. Uh, but when school gets in the way, I just uh, make sure I take care of all of that first before I kind of like do all yeah. that. So are you living at home right now or you have a, your own apartment or? Uh, I'm living at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I live at my parents' house, so I'm yeah, trying, to, I would, trying to. I would. I would do that for as long as I possibly could. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. If, if I had that option, I'd still be doing that today. So, <laughs> yeah, saving <laughs> a lot of money. That so right. Put that rent check into into a uh, an asset that makes you money. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so kind of what is your strategy? Uh, what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish, let's say, in the next three months, six months, nine months, um, uh, two or three years? Kind of where do you see this going and what are you trying to do? Yeah, so um, I'm trying to get my first property. Um, I'm looking for anywhere between like five to like 30 units, but I don't want to be uh, closed minded. Like I'll just get whatever is a good deal, even if it's over 30 units um so i'm trying to get that under my belt within this like first year by the end of 2021 at least um but the thing is um i don't have that much capital and uh one of the strategies that i was looking at is like wholesaling a property so i have reserves so that I can like tackle something like that because like i don't have that much money as of now um but I was wondering if wholesaling uh, an apartment complex or like a commercial as or like a commercial, like, like a, an office building would be like feasible in order to kind of tackle getting like an apartment complex. Like, what do you, so what do you why don't you, what, what's your mother's um, plan for trying to open up a, an adult foster care? 
yeah so she's in like the same boat like um she's trying to obtain capital as well so that she can put like a down payment on a house because um what we tried to do previously was we have like a, a HELOC on our own house uh we were trying to use that HELOC to buy like a house um like outright we were going to use the entire equity from the HELOC to buy a house but um I think that deal fell through because there was way too many repairs that had to be made. And I think the location wasn't the greatest. So we ended up backing out of that deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were just like trying to find something else that's more feasible that's next to a hospital and uh, kind of like going from there. Like that's what she's trying to do. And I was like helping her along with that too. Did your mom work out of a hospital or out of a doctor's office or? Uh, so she, she um, works for two different healthcare. Um, so like home care companies where she does, uh, she's a visiting physician. So before COVID, she used to visit these uh, patients at their homes and uh, give them like treatment there or like kind of diagnose them. But uh, once whole COVID like hit, she's been doing this like remotely. So um she doesn't work out of a hospital. She's like a visiting physician. Right. Gotcha. She's she's almost like the uh, old fashioned physicians that went door to door, came to your home to serve you, which is going to be the new wave moving forward. Right. Uh, so she's already doing something that's at the front edge of where the industry is going. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yep. So uh, what is the nearest hospital to you guys? Where do you guys go? when you when you need to go see a doctor or you need to go to the hospital yeah so um there's a providence um there's a saint john's providence like five minutes away but that hospital system is not the greatest so we go to like a hospital system that's 20 minutes away that's that's called henry ford uh they have a lot better doctors over there so we usually go there if something happens so yeah it's like but like there's a lot of hospitals near like where we live well, the reason I ask is that um, I, I, in my mind, there's a very clear strategy for you to get what you want as quickly as possible, okay. which is to partner with your mom okay. and help her buy the, um, the uh, deal that she wants. Okay. My advice would be not to, uh, not to get a home, but to get an apartment building or a mixed use building. Mixed use, okay. Okay, and uh, you you know what I mean by mixed use? Yeah, so there's like um, there's like a retail space under that apartment building. Right, and you could turn that retail space into the foster care. Okay. So the bottom floor could be the foster care and then okay. have apartments above it. And your mom can run the business on the first floor and you run the business on the floors above. Okay. Okay. I, I never thought of it that way, but yeah. Okay. And you can, and both of you, uh, either uh, separately or collectively, um, if you want to start, say, for instance, a commercial brokerage. Okay. Um, or if you wanted to open a, a small uh, psychology uh, office, uh, is your master's going to be in psychology? Uh, it's in uh, business administration and uh, master's of science and management. Okay. So I would go on under the business route. Okay. So you could open up, um, both of you could get an SBA loan. Okay. The, and part of the SBA loan is you need to have a business. And that okay. doesn't need to be active. Okay. okay. Uh, and they will actually give you a lot of free training. Okay on how to open a business and how to become better at a lot of things that you're gonna need in this industry, reading financials, uh, putting together business plans, all the stuff that you are going to need to be good at to be a good apartment investor. Okay. So you need to know how to read financials in order to underwrite a good deal. Right. They'll teach you how to read financials, not because they want you to, they, they will not automatically assume being a landlord or apartment owner as a business. Okay. To them, their idea of a business is an active, like what your mom wants to do. That's a business. Or okay. if you were opening a, um, 
uh, a uh, little office for psychology. That's a business. Right. Uh, or if you were opening an office as a consultant for business, you know, okay. something similar to what they're doing, but you're going to do it. They're doing it um, as a uh, not-for-profit. You would be doing it as a for-profit. But okay. regardless right. of what it was, uh, let's say it was a small jewelry shop that your dad okay. just wanted to keep open three hours a day or two days a week, okay? Just something small, um, but anything that you could do, you both could get an SBA loan. Okay. And then in my mind, and I've never done this, but I, I, you know, I would be trying to buy one building with both of those loans. Okay, okay. Okay, in other words, both of you get a loan, you partner up and take the loan together to buy one uh, bigger building. Okay. And you may have then two offices on the first floor. One, you may be super small. Okay. It may, it may just be a desk for mm -hmm. you and a phone. Okay. Right. And the rest of the space is dedicated to your mom's business. Okay. Right. Because you want to maximize or you set aside, a, you put up a little wall and put a separate door. And if your dad wants to have a small jewelry shop, you know, or, or something. Uh, but if you do that, you don't have to raise capital. You don't have to use all your own capital. You can get most of the capital that you need by combining and you'll have to reach out to someone that makes SBA loans or reach out to someone at the SBA and ask them, how can I use the SBA loan in combination with say a larger Fannie Freddie loan to take down a much bigger mixed use building? Okay. Okay. That's one strategy. Another strategy is just not use the SBA at, at all, but go after a building, let's say, um, for the sake of argument, a, a 10 unit building, okay? okay? And let's say that it's, um, um, well, let's say a 12 unit building and that it's three stories high, there's four units on each floor. Your mom could have all four of the downstairs units, okay? That she could make adult daycare out of those four units. Right. Right. Or, or ever how much space she needs. If she only needs one, then she could just take one. And then as she grows and needs two, then you, when that uh, second one becomes, that lease is up, you don't renew it and you give it to mom for her to expand into. Okay. And you can just keep expanding as much as mom needs to. And if you have to eventually buy another building just for mom, okay, um, or a mixed use building just for mom, Right. You know, but you need to partner with her because you both, what you both need should um, have the synergy that both of you can get what you want and need. And I would tell you, don't waste time trying to wholesale a property because that time should be spent trying to put together this deal. Okay. So okay. that immediately in the kind of property you're looking for, one that immediately will put um, you know, a thousand dollars a month into your pocket. Okay. Okay. Between, uh, between your management fees, um, and, uh, the rents, you know, try to put a thousand dollars a month in your pocket. Now, obviously, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Okay. okay. But that's, that's kind of, I think that by the time you found a good property to wholesale, you could have found a property that, uh, it's not going to pay you 20,000 like that. Potentially it could, you know, potentially you could find a property. I mean, if you're planning on wholesaling, you typically have, you, have you wholesaled before? I never have. Yeah. Okay. So you, that it takes a long time to build up a list of wholesalers and people that, that you can uh, get to buy the property from you. Okay. Have you ever done any fi fix and flip type work? I have not, yeah. Okay, all right. So um, to me, I think your time would be much better spent uh, trying to pursue a building uh, bigger than what your mom is thinking about, but you could okay. still use the HELOC money to help you get into the building. And you could start to raise some money from friends and family and start telling them, look, this is the strategy that I'm thinking about. Here's how I plan on doing it and put together a business plan. Okay. okay. Put together a pitch deck. 
okay? Okay. And put together a team of people that are more experienced than you so that the people that you're pitching this to say it's not just you because you haven't done it before, okay? okay. So here's, it's not just me. This is my business plan. And I know that I'm going to need strong partners with me on my team. So here's my, my team and put together people on that pitch deck on that resume so that when you go to your friends and family, they're gonna be more likely to say yes. Okay. And then obviously you wanna pitch it to everyone you come in contact with, but usually your first investors are gonna be people you already know. Okay. So what you wanna know is would, when you find the perfect building, because you haven't found it yet, but when you find the perfect building that plugs into this business plan, would you be interested in investing with me? Or who do you know that might be interested in investing with me? Okay. okay. And okay. start to, when you find people to say, oh, yeah, I would, or, you know, your cousin or my neighbor or whoever, when you find those people that say yes, then the next question is, um, how much would you uh, feel comfortable investing in this deal? When they say, well, how much are you going to need? Say, well, I'm going to need roughly, let's, for the sake of argument, we'll, we'll decide what that looks like down the road. Okay. But let's just say for the sake of argument, you're going to look for a $5 million property. Okay. okay. Somewhere between, um, roughly between 2 million and 5 million. Okay. okay. Let's assume that you're going to get a 70% loan. Okay. 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 And let's also assume that you're going to need at least 10% or 20% additional capital for rehab and for uh, operating uh, for an operating fund. Okay. okay. Right. So if you're looking at a $5 million property, 10% um, of that is 500,000, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Times three uh, would be one and a half million dollars that you need to raise. Plus you want 10% of that as a rehab fund or whatever. That's an additional 500 K. So you need to raise Two, uh, two million on a $5 million deal. Okay. Okay. Right. So when people ask you how much say, well, I need to raise 2 million. And the likely response is going to be, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't expect you to give me all the 2 million. I, I would have said no, if you, if you would have offered. Right. Uh, because the maximum any one investor can invest, they have to invest. They don't have to but if they invest 20% or more, then they have to sign on the loan. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so you want to ideally, uh, unless you want them to sign on the loan or unless they want to sign on the loan, then they would need to keep their investment below 20%. So what okay. would 20% of that 2 million uh, would be what? Uh, 400,000 or yeah, 400,000. So okay. they would need to invest less than that. Okay. And then you're going to want to set a minimum investment amount, okay? Um, depending on, usually what I would advise you is if you're going to syndicate the deal, then you want to divide your capital raise by 35. Okay. And do you understand why 35? Um, why would it be 35? Because a 506B allows you 35 sophisticated investors. Okay. And it's easier to find money with sophisticated investors usually than it is with accredited investors. Okay. 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 What would be the difference between that, like sophisticated and accredited? A sophisticated investor is somebody who is, is used to investing. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be in real estate. They may be investing in the stock market. Uh, you know, they've done options. They've done shorts puts and calls, you know, um, uh, invested on margin, uh, or they buy, have been buying commodities or trading in Forex exchange, people who are used to investing. Oh, okay. If they're not used to investing, then maybe they have a degree in finance or they're a CPA or they run their own small business. So they understand financials. They understand how to look at a deal. There's, they're, they have enough knowledge that the SEC considers them to be a viable 
sophisticated investor. Okay. Now okay. you have to already know them. Okay. And what does that mean? It means more than I just met you yesterday. Okay. Okay. It's somebody that you've known and had, like you could not be on one of my deals because even though we've been in the same meetup groups a few times, this is the first time you and I have spoken. Right. So we want to have at least one or two or three phone calls like this to get to know each other a little bit better. Maybe several text messages back and forth with each other or comments on uh, direct messages uh, through Facebook or LinkedIn or some other. We want to establish a relationship so that the SEC cannot come back later on uh, and say, you didn't really know that person well enough to make that decision. Even though they told you they were sophisticated, as it turns out, they weren't, and you didn't do enough due diligence to figure that out. Okay. okay. So if you've had uh, three or more phone calls with them, conversations and texts and stuff like that, then mm -hmm. that's probably enough, but you need to keep track of it. So okay. you need to like, uh, do you use Gmail or Outlook? Yeah. Yeah, I use Gmail. Okay. Yeah. Do you use Gmail's contacts? Um, or just so the contacts I, it's native on your phone. Uh, I think I don't have it like set up on my phone, but like I can do that. Yeah. I can easily okay. do that. Though. Yeah. I would start doing that. I would transfer all of your contacts wherever they're stored, uh -huh. transfer them into Google contacts. And the reason for that is you can use Google contacts as kind of a mini, uh, on the cheap CRM. Okay where you're, you're basically taking notes. There's a notes section. Oh, okay. 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 And you just take notes and date the date that you had a phone call with somebody and okay. just briefly what you guys discussed. Okay. And document that. Okay. 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 And, and, and if you don't, uh, if you want to do it a different way, then you could do a, like a Google uh, spreadsheet and just put everybody in the spreadsheet. And then just every time you call them, just put a date and then have a comment section, you know, um, uh, after each phone call, you know, but I think it's, for me, I think it's easier uh, to do it inside Google contacts. Okay. 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 All right. Google contacts. Okay. So that's like and, to just document like conversations. Right. Now, oh. once you have these people that say, yes, I would be willing to invest. And we divided that by 35. Oh, I didn't finish telling you. The, so that's a sophisticated investor. Okay. An accredited investor is someone who makes more than 200,000 a year or 300,000 a year between um, both spouses. Okay. Or their net worth is greater than a million dollars, not including their uh, personal residence. Okay, okay. Okay. An accredited investor, you can have as many of those as you want on your deal. There's no okay. limit. But on non-accredited, you're limited to 35. Okay. So the sophisticated investor, not accredited, you're limited to 35. So okay. if you needed to raise $2 million, I would divide that by 35. That's $57,000. Okay. okay. So for me, if I was trying to raise that amount of money, I would probably set my minimum investment at 50 K. Okay. Now, if I started getting a lot of resistance where people say, well, I can't do that, but I might be able to do 20. Then what I might do is depending on how many of them I had, I could lower my minimum or I could tell them, Hey, why don't you partner up with another investor? And okay. combined, you guys can put in 50. Okay. And especially okay. if they can partner up with somebody else that they know in their family. Okay. That way they don't have to get comfortable with that person. They already right. know that person. Right. You know? So if they can come together as a family and invest, you know, in the deal. Okay. Okay. So that wouldn't so, affect like the 35 like sophisticated investors at right. all? Like if they partner right. with someone. And then when you start doing this and you find somebody who says, yes, I can invest 20 grand, I can invest 50 grand, I can invest a hundred grand. That's what's known as a soft commitment. Okay. And you want to have a spreadsheet 
where you keep track of all of your soft commitments. Okay. And once you reach, in this example, we said you needed to raise 2 million. Once you reached 4 million, now you're ready to go buy that building. Okay. Because okay. you can usually count on about half of whatever the soft commitment is. So about half of the people are not gonna be able to do it. The timing's not gonna be right. Something happened between the time that you spoke to them and the time that you had the deal ready to go. Okay. So that's why it gets cut in half, okay? Right. Or some people just get scared, you right. know? Just they gave, they, if you were ready to take the money when they said yes, that's ideally you'd want to take the money right then. Right. Okay. Uh, but there's a trade-off. Uh, if you go find the deal first and then you're able to take the money right then. The problem is if you can't get it closed, if you can't get all the money by the time you close, now you're in trouble. Okay. Now you potentially could lose the deal. So okay. there's a balancing act. I prefer to get soft commitments ahead of time. Uh -huh. Tell people, this is what you're investing in. This is what it's going to look like. So then I, and I'm looking for it right now. I might find it tomorrow. It might take me 60 days to find it. I just want to know when I do find it. And this is not going to be the only one I do. So I'm, I'm going to repeat this process. So whenever you're ready to invest, I just, you know, are you ready now? If you're not ready now, when do you think you might be ready? Is it going to be three months, six months, nine months? And a lot of times that has nothing to do with, it's going to be nine months because uh, I'm, I'm invested in a deal right now and I won't get my money back for nine months. Right. Most okay. of the time they just pick an arbitrary number Nine months is how long I think it's going to take for me to get comfortable <laughs> talking to you about this. Right. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. that's usually where that number comes from. It's it's usually not a barrier. You know, I've got a CD that's going to mature in nine months. You know, I've got a um, uh, something, an event that's happening. Usually it's not that. Right. So, right. So that's kind of the game plan that I would lay out for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, now you need to back into that. Um, if that fits wh your, what you want to do, then you need to take that business plan that you have and say, okay, put a time limit on it. All right. You said by the end of year. So by December and don't do December 31st, do December 1st, because you don't want to raise capital and try to close around the holidays. Okay. Right. Okay. So say de by December 1st, I want to have this deal done. So what do I need to do? What's the big picture I need to do, which um, in order to accomplish that, I kind of laid out what I would do if I were in your shoes, knowing what little bit that I know about you. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and then I would break that down into what does that look like in six months, in three months? Okay. These are the milestones I need to hit at nine months, six months, three months. And then break that down into monthly uh, activities and break that down into weekly activities and break that down into daily activities of what you need to do to make that goal happen. Okay. And if you can't break it down into daily activities, then you need to spend more time thinking about the goal. Okay, because okay. you've got to figure out, okay, what are the pieces? Okay, so we talked about capital. All right, so that's right. one piece. So how do I raise the capital? I've got to put together, I've got to put together a business plan, a pitch deck that I can show to people. And then I have to show that to X number of people so that I can get X number to tell me yes. Okay. So how many people do I have to speak to to get how many yeses? And that's going to tell you how many people you need to speak to when you start breaking it down per day. Okay. And okay. whatever that number is, double it. Okay. So if you figure I need to speak to three people a day, try to speak to six. Okay. 
Okay. okay. If you figure I need to speak to one person a day, try to speak to two. Okay. Because you, it will never go as it's going to, it will never go linear. It'll be fits and jerks. Uh, there's going to be times where things are not going well, times when it's going super, uh, times when other things get in your way. And, you know, so always, you're always better off doing a little more so that when you, when you have to do a little less, that you're okay. You've got a buffer. Okay. You may do your goals. And when you get down to the daily goal, it says you need to do six. And you know, with everything else that's going on in your life, there's, it's impossible for you to do six. So what do you do if that happens? You, you've you got know. to push it out beyond December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've got to push it out because now you've, you started with where you want to go and you backed it all the way down into a daily goal. Okay. Okay. And when the daily goal cannot be met, then you do it the other way. Say, okay, I can't do six. I can only do three. So effectively, I need December of the following year. Okay. okay. Because okay. that's how many I can legitimately do. All right. So that's only one piece of it. The other piece is what kind of property am I going to target? And where am I going to get that property? And how am I going to get it? So if I'm going to target um, um, something, we want to be close to a hospital. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to look at every commercial building that's that would fit that's close to within a within um, a ten block radius of a hospital. Okay. okay. So I'm going to. And how am I going to do that? Am I going to do it personally? Am I going to go out and drive a 10 block radius? Or do I want to partner with a broker and tell the broker, this is my criteria. I want any commercial property within a 10 block radius of these two hospitals. Okay. Or these three hospitals. Okay. okay. Or this one hospital, you know, and just start looking um, to see. Now, if you start the more narrow you make that, you may see that he doesn't, call you back because he hasn't found a property. So right. you might need to expand until he starts sending you some stuff. And if he doesn't send you stuff, it's either because he doesn't want to be a good partner or there's legitimately nothing there. Okay. But if there's legitimately nothing there, he should be calling you and telling you, Hey, I'm not finding anything that fits your parameter. But the very first thing I would want him to do, I don't care if the building is for sale. I just want you to identify the building. So tell me if there's buildings like this around that hospital and okay. give me the name of the owner, when it was sold, how much it was sold for, and also what are the going cap rates for this type of property in those neighborhoods? Okay. Going you to want to very clearly define his parameters for him. And okay. then when he doesn't call you in a week, Call him back. If he doesn't have that list started and started to give you some information, because trust me, they have the ability to spit out a list like that in a, within an hour. Okay. So if he hasn't done it within a week, you probably need to find a new broker to work with. Okay. okay? But okay. you basically are going to want to build a relationship with a broker or a few brokers, okay, that can help you find these kind of properties. But in okay. the beginning, I'm not interested in the ones that are for sale. I am interested in the ones that are for sale, but I want a list of all of them. Okay. On market and off market. Okay. Because I'm not going to wait for that person. If I can't find the right unit, then I'm, I'm going to reach out to this individual and I'm probably going to have you do it for me. Okay. okay. I want okay. you to read, but I want to know who they are ahead of time. Okay. Okay. So I can start to develop relationships with them. Right. And then when I come to you and say, okay, I've developed a relationship. Now I want you to go because I'm going to need you to negotiate for me. Okay. On my behalf. Okay. 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 So I'll, I'll use you. Uh, and I would even tell them, say, I'll use you as a buyer broker. Okay. Okay. And we'll figure out how to get you paid. So if the, if the property's not listed, I'll pay you. Okay. Okay. If the property is listed, then you're going to get paid your commission as being part of that brokerage anyway. Okay. okay. 
okay. but if it's off market, um, I will pay you if so that you know you're not working for free. Obviously, I don't expect you to work for free. Okay. Okay. Now you're not going to pay him a, a buyer's brokerage fee though on a listed deal because he gets half of that commission already. Okay. So there's but no reason like, for you to pay him on top of that. Right. Right. So this would, would be like off market, then then uh, we, we would get a commission. Right. Okay. And you're instead of the seller paying it, you're paying it. It's gonna wind okay. up being the same thing. Okay. In other words, it gets added on top of the deal. Whether it comes from you or from the seller doesn't matter. It gets okay. added on top of the deal. Okay. 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 So then once you have that figured out, you can back that in to how much work you need to do. How many brokers do you need to call? How many a day? You know, how many properties do you, do you need to look at? You know, again, a daily goal for how am I going to get the property? Okay. 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 Um, and once you've done that, that's, that you should, it might take you a month to come up with all of that. Okay. Okay. But spend as much time as you can on that. Okay. okay. On that. On, and it doesn't need to be that plan. I mean, I think that's a legitimate plan for you. But if you've got a different plan in mind, then follow the plan that you have in mind. But you've got to use a, a very similar structure in order to make that plan come true. Okay. 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 And okay. ideally, if you started reaching out, you could put together a pitch deck. Just you don't need to create one, just copy one. Okay. 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 Copy one that's already out there and just change the names. The names have been protected to protect the innocent. <laughs> just <laughs> change the names, change the location. You know, if you want to change a couple of the pictures, you know, if you want to put a picture of the hospital, you know, you can find those pictures off the internet and download them and put them, you know, just swap them out with the ones that are already in the pitch deck and just let that pitch deck be a, 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 an outline for you creating your own. Okay. Okay. And once you have that pitch deck put together, you start, um, um, you could start talking to your friends uh, and family from tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Uh, and tell them that this is what you're working on and that you should have it put together here pretty soon. And would you be interested? And you could say this five years from now, you've, you've been doing it already for five years, but if you want an easy opening, say, this is what I'm working on. Once I get it all put together, would you be interested in taking a look at it? It's a very oh. non-threatening way to open the door where they can say, oh, sure. Or you could even say, you know, hey, I really respect your opinion. I'd, when I get it put together, I'd love to, to get your feedback. You know, would okay. you be willing to give me some feedback? Okay. So. Okay. So, okay. So um, about the uh, brokerage, um, so we would have to get into as many, like really get into as many relationships as we can with um, the brokerage or brokers in our area. Um, but I think... Um, Repeat how you would kind of like establish like a relationship with them. So in terms of kind of like selling the, or like selling a property or like obtaining a property and how like we would get paid, like, could you like go over that one more time? So how to build the relationship with the broker? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For like one so way. On number one, you, number one, I like to target brokers. Okay. So I'm going to try to figure out, I may go on LoopNet okay. and see, and also, are you familiar with uh, uh, Crexy, the Crexy, Crexy website? Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. so go on Crexy and LoopNet, put in properties between one and 5 million, look okay. at every, and, and, and check off multifamily or mixed use. Okay. Okay. And write down, put in a spreadsheet every broker and his contact information, okay? Okay. And if you can find a picture of him, attach a picture to the, to the file. Okay. Okay. And then go to LinkedIn and get every one of them to connect with you. And then see if they have a Facebook page, start connecting with them. Okay. okay? But don't spend an inordinate amount of time by calling them yet. Okay. 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 
because in one phone call, you could have made 15 comments on LinkedIn on right. their profile. Right. You could have sent 15 or 20 texts or DMs in the same amount of time that you could speaking to one person. And they cannot interview you. Once you okay. get on a phone call, they're going to interview you and they're going to say things to try to disqualify you. Okay. 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 So don't give them that opportunity. Develop the relationship beforehand. Okay. Okay. Once you've started doing that, take and try to, you've got a little bit of information about them. You followed their social media a little bit. Try to find and rank them, okay? At least 10 of them, rank them one to 10 of the ones. And the one of the very first things I would do, and I'm gonna do this more than once. I'm gonna rank them more than once. Okay. One's gonna be the eyeball test, okay? I'm gonna look at them and I'm gonna rank them one through 10, the ones that I wanna connect with. Okay. How do you do that? It's just a gut feeling. Right. That's right. all it is, but it is more powerful than you realize. There's a reason your subconscious picked that person. Okay. Okay. There's going to be something about that person that I almost guarantee you, you're going to find something in common. Okay. okay? And I don't know how that works, but it right. <laughs> right. it's almost mystical. Yeah. Uh, but uh, usually you're going to find people that throughout your lifetime, you find that you connect with certain people that your subconscious will pick certain physical traits that you have always been able to connect with. Right. So that's probably the background about what's going on. Yeah, right. right. But but we're still going to use that. And, um, and that'll be one of the ways we measure it. Another way we're going to measure it is after we've looked at their social profile. So mm -hmm. you need to rank them by picture first. Right. Okay? Okay. Then then start looking at their social profile and look for things, uh, just read their social profile and scroll through their post, okay? And then after you've done that, you can rank them again, okay? okay? So if you have 10 of them, if you read through one of their posts, you probably wanna go ahead and assign a number, one through 10, right away, okay? okay. And then, because it's gonna be hard for you to read 10 social feeds and then remember all 10 of them, because right. they're gonna get jumbled up in your head. Yeah. So assign a number right away. Maybe they're all five, one through 10. Everybody wound up a five. Right. Okay. So then it becomes harder. But ideally, we're not going to get everybody one, two, three, four through 10. We're going to get some that are jumbled up two threes, one six, four sevens. Then we can go back and say, okay, let me look at the four sevens again, because that's the one I had the most of. Right. You know, and let me see how do I spread them out? And because one of them is going to have to be um, uh, a seven, one's going to have to be a six, one's going to have to be an eight, and one's right. going to have to be either a five or a nine. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have to spread them out, but we may have to go back a second time to look through and see if there's something else that catches our eye. Uh, maybe we looked at their feed. Maybe the next time we go in, we look at all of their likes and dislikes. Uh, we look at all of the groups that they're that they follow. We look at you know that additional information to help us filter it again. What I'm trying to do is help you. What normally takes six months of building a relationship, I want to try to give you everything that you need so that when you do go in and start building the relationship with the number one person, it should just go very naturally and very, and you're able to build it much, much faster. And it will be a much deeper relationship for you. Okay. And ideally you want just a few of those in your market. Okay. 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 So one at Bercadia, one at, um, at Marcus and Millichap, one at uh, JLL, you know, you may pick one or two or three at the different one at Kaiser, you know, at the different brokerages, the big brokerages, but you also want to have a few that are in the small brokerages. And you okay. may find between that one and 5 million, once you find those people on LoopNet and Craigslist, 
Craigsy, there may not be any of them in the big brokerages. They right. may all be in the small brokerages because that deal size doesn't fit in the big brokerage. Okay. And that's another thing you want to consider is if they're at a big brokerage, how are they really going to want to work with you on a $5 million deal? Right. Or a $1 right. million deal. So you may, that may also factor into, you know, the consideration, but also when you're looking at LoopNet and Crexy, make sure that you're um, making a notation of how many listings that person had. Okay. okay. So you can also see who's the most active. And then also you want to find out from their social profile, have they always been doing this or have they had other jobs? And if this is their first time doing it, that also you may, you may find that the person that met your eyeball test is also just getting started. That okay. might, do you want to pick the most experienced or the least experienced? Well, there is no answer to that, but I like sometimes going after inexperienced because I'm inexperienced. Right, exactly. And so they won't judge me as much. And if I can help them become more successful, we can grow together. Right. And they'll do a lot more for me if they believe I'm a serious investor than a more experienced person will. Okay. Right. So right. sometimes I really like getting that new person. Okay. Okay. Right. Especially if they've met a lot of the other check boxes. Right. Right. Okay. So those this are kind of the things that I would do to vet a broker and, and decide which one I want to start um, creating a relationship. Once you've done all of that, then you can uh, decide to pick up the phone and say, look, um, my mom and I are a team. We've, uh, we're um, uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs. We're opening a new venture. Uh, we're going through uh, the SBA loan process and also through uh, their training programs. And here's our business plan. You know, I'd like to send you our business plan and okay. send him that pitch deck. You know, uh, and and say, I need a partner on the brokerage side to help me implement this business plan. What I need from you is number one, start looking for this asset, and number two, send me a list of all assets that fit this criteria within that ten block radius, on and off market. Okay. And I will if it's off market. I will employ you as a buyer broker so okay. that I will pay you as a buyer broker if it's off market. If we, if we bring an off market deal so that I, that you know, you're going to get paid, you're not working for free. Okay. 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 And once you've had that phone call, then you may ex the next week, or you may even do this before you have that phone call. You may say, look, uh, I'm uh, my mom and I um, have a partnership or you don't even have to mention your mom say, look, my business partners and I are, are getting ready to start a new venture and we're going to need a relationship with a broker. You know, um, this is our business plan. Would love you to take a look at it. And by the way, would you like to, you know, get a beer, get a cup of coffee, you know, uh, whatever. Okay. Right. Right. Um, and if you have things like that, you can start building that relationship that is outside of work. Okay. okay? Right. Uh, and as COVID starts to, you know, go away and we're able to meet more in person, you may want to go by their office. Um, you know, in the beginning, you may want to go by every week and right. drop off a, a, a half a dozen of donuts or a box right. of coffee, you know, or something. And if you do do that, you plant your ass in a seat and you don't leave that office for at least an hour. Okay. That broker may not have time to talk to you, but some of the other brokers might want a donut too. Right, right. And the receptionist might want a donut. Right. The more everyone there gets to know you, the more all of them after a while start to feel guilty about taking all your donuts and they're going to want to help you also. Right. So when you call looking for that broker and he's not out, he's on the phone, he's showing a property, they go, well, what can I do to help you, Remy? Okay. Oh, well, I was calling to, I need, I need a, uh, him to go into the MLS and give me a name and a phone number for uh, 510 Chesterfield. Oh, okay. I can do that for you. 
Okay. So you start to be known in that brokerage. Okay. okay. So there's a, all of this doesn't happen overnight, you know, but right. those are the kind of things, if you start implementing these types of plans, I guarantee you, you cannot fail. Okay. So just be a little patient, start to implement the plan. And if you start implementing the plan, and let's say a property falls in your lap tomorrow, you don't have to wait till December. You right. can go ahead and, you know, because some things are going to happen faster than you anticipated. Some right. things are going to happen slower. Okay? Right. Just be ready. You have a plan. And if you're going to try to make this plan happen linearly, lin, lin, linear, linear, <laughs> Lee, that's, that's a hillbilly from Tennessee trying to say a three syllable word. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's not always going to happen that way. Okay. Okay. So you just have to be uh, what we called in the military, rigid flexibility. Right. <laughs> so you have a very rigid plan, but you're flexible enough to, to if something that you had step nine needs to move up to step three, then you're going to, you're going to be able to pivot and move it up to step three. Okay. Okay. And then just proceed from there. Okay. 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 All right. So I went way over our time. Um, I hope that this was useful. Yes, and, it really was. Um, I would also like to extend an invitation. Do you know what the GOB network is or have you heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it from uh, Aaron. Um, yeah, he was talking about it and uh, Mark. Mark is on there too. So I talked to him like prior to this meeting. Aaron Aaron Goins? Yeah. Yep. And Mark? Um, Cesar or Cesar. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. From New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think that you should be part of our network. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But there, uh, there is no financial cost to be on our network. Okay. But okay. there is a cost. And I tell everyone that to be on the network, you have to agree to be an active participant. Okay. Okay. And okay. I'm looking for go-givers. Okay. Now, somebody that like somebody that contribute contributes somebody that's in uh, not um, in this just for themselves. Okay. Somebody right. that's willing to lend a hand to other people and somebody that has an open mindset. Okay. So you need to have the kind of mindset that is a collaborative mindset. You don't if you're threatened by uh, other people and you're afraid that they may steal your idea. Uh, then it's probably not the right place for you. Okay. Uh, this is the kind of place that uh, when I see somebody that is working on the same idea, working in the same town, I see that as an opportunity to have a partner. Right. And right. if I can partner with them, guess what I just did? I took away competition. Right. I yeah. took away a competitor. Right. Right. And I made that competitor my partner, my team. Okay, so that's the way uh, I look at, at things. Um, and those are the kind of people that I want to be on the platform. Okay. Um, I'm not going to judge whether you are or are not that person to let you on the platform. Okay. But I, but I will always be on the lookout for people that don't fit that profile. And right. I want everyone else on the platform to be on the lookout for people that don't fit that profile. Okay. Because the, the GOB network is being built as a hive mind. It's being built as a crowdsourced uh, company, if you will. Are you familiar with the Linux operating system? Uh, somewhat, not, not really, but okay. somewhat. Um, well, they are a direct competitor to Microsoft. Okay. And the difference is Bill Gates owned Microsoft, right? He right, built right. Microsoft. Linux doesn't belong to anyone. Okay. It's what's known as open source. Okay. It's, it's freeware. It's a freemium model. So okay. anyone that wants the code, if you are an IT guy and you understand coding, you can take all of that code and make it your own and do whatever you want with it. Okay. That's the model that I'm building. I'm not okay. building a Microsoft model. 
And why am I doing that? Because I want to build something that is not just a um, freeware model, but more importantly, I want to build something that is a paradigm shift in the industry that nobody has done. And this model has never been tried. And the reason I want to try it, there's a lot of reasons I want to try it, but one of the biggest ones is I cannot build this by myself. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough hours in a day. I don't have enough lifetimes, <laughs> but collectively I can bring in everyone to help me. And the power of that crowd, the power of that brain trust can build this. I don't need to build it. I just need to get it started. Just like Wikipedia. Right. When they first started, one person, one article. Right? Right. And right. the World Book Encyclopedia and so Encyclopedia Britannica that goes, that'll never work. <laughs> you know, they're not professional writers. Um, they're not journalists. They're not, uh, they're not uh, intellectuals, but what they fail to realize is the power of a collective that right. anyone could put an article up there. And that's also the weakness because anyone can, I could put an article up there, how to perform brain surgery. And obviously I have no clue, right. <laughs> right. but it wouldn't stay up there very long because everyone is the editor. And the brain surgeons would say, nah, that's not the way you do it. The article <laughs> comes down. Right. Okay. But yeah. if another brain surgeon put it up there, then you would collaboratively be peer reviewed. So that article is not only accurate, but probably better written than any one article could be written by any one individual, because everyone gets to contribute just a little bit to it. And that's what happens with the Linux operating system is that anybody can go in and see a, a piece of code, one line of code and see a mistake and fix that mistake or just see a faster way of doing it, a better way of doing it and make that little correction. And every time someone does that, the system becomes more efficient, becomes faster, becomes better. Okay. And you don't have... 3,000 employees at Microsoft, and of the 3,000, only 500 of them are programmers. Right. Yeah. Building Microsoft. Instead, you have the entire planet, including the Microsoft guys, <laughs> that can go in and make your code better. Right. So that's the power of what my platform is, and so that's that's why uh, you know I I entrust everyone that if we have the wrong people on the crowd, on the platform, that everyone collectively will ask that person to go find a new home. Okay. So that's why I, I let anybody in because I, I trust that everybody will find, um, you know, and make those corrections. Okay. So okay. kind of like, um, uh, how, how did uh, George Bush say? Uh, he didn't say it the, the correct way, but um, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. I won't be fooled again. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but but the essence is you can you can um, pardon my French, you could screw us once by coming and taking and leaving nothing behind. But shame on us if we allow you to do it twice. Right. Right. So okay. So I'll right. if you're interested, uh, I'll send you a welcome letter. Okay. Uh, and you can try out the platform. It'll ask you to fill out a small form. Basically, okay. the form just says, who are you? How do we get in touch with you? And what are what are your interests? Um, and if you don't understand something that's on the form, like it's going to ask you, are you are you interested in being a GP, an LP, a KP, a, or a JV? If you don't understand those, you can either leave them blank or you can go to um, Google that, what is a GP in real estate? Okay. What's a KP right. in real estate? Right. Uh, and then there's a section that says, what other skills do you have? What other life skills do you have? Okay. And what we're looking for there is what uh, other previous W-2 jobs do you have? Or what other expertise have you gained through education? Or what other expertise do you have just from your life experiences? Okay. You know, I'm a plumber. I'm an electrician. 
Uh, I'm a programmer. Uh, I'm in the IT industry. Uh, I'm in the healthcare industry. You know, uh, those kind of things. Right. Yeah. That would be <laughs> awesome. I, I'd love to be a part of it. So, yeah. Well, I'll send you that welcome letter and, and it'll be just fill out the form. The form will take you to a folder that says first start here. Okay. Once you've completed that folder, then you'll need to reach out to me again and basically tell me um, uh, or anyone that's on the platform. But uh, you can reach out to me and say, hey, Jim, I completed the first start here folder. If you have any questions at that point, I'll answer the questions. But if you don't have any questions, then I'll go ahead and open up the entire folder for you. Uh, the entire platform, and then also invite you to the Slack channel. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds this good. sounds like a plan. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to get on my calendar. I really appreciate it. And I hope that this was a good call for you and that you got some value from it. And I look forward to the next time we talk. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like, it was definitely awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely We'll definitely keep in touch for sure. All right. Sounds great. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. All right talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Yep. Bye.